Hey guys, Ryan King here, and I'm the keyboard instructor for WorshipArtistry.com. In today's video on becoming a better keyboard player, we're going to take a look at layering. Layering is a feature that is indispensable to us as keyboard players. Oftentimes, during different parts of the service, we're called upon to provide different sounds. Uh, we need to provide some underbed, uh, so to speak, as, as people are talking or praying, as we're transitioning from one song to the next. Uh, many times, the songs that we play have a lot of different sounds in them, and so in order to do that, we need to be able to combine those sounds into one performance, be able to access those sounds and change them on the fly, bring them in and out, adjust their volumes, and so we need to be able to do that as keyboard players. So the first step in doing that is we need to have a keyboard that will allow us to do that. Now, I'm just using a regular keyboard today. Normally, I have a different rig that has a computer and software sense. I use my iPad to control a lot of that. But I wanted to start simple in case all that you're using happens to be just a keyboard. So I'm using a Roland RD700SX. And it's very simple. It's got very simple sounds. But it allows me to layer these sounds together, which is what you want to be able to do. If you're using just a regular keyboard, you want to look for a performance mode or a multi-mode. Many times you'll have a little section on your keyboard that says voice, uh, performance, multi, something to that effect. So you need to be able to get into your performance mode and it's there where you can combine your different sounds together. The other uh, basically prerequisite for this is that you need to be able to turn those sounds on and off on the fly. That means as you're playing your sounds, as you're playing them, you want to be able to turn them on and off and adjust their volumes as you go along. Uh, so that's what I've done today with my keyboard. I've got four sounds set up. I've got an acoustic piano that sounds like this. That's just a straight acoustic piano, nothing really special about it. I've also got an electric piano that sounds like a Fender Rhodes, and that sounds like this. It kind of has a little bit more low end to it, a little bit more uh, of a percussive element to it. I've also added an effect to it right here that it gives it a tremolo on the end of the sound. You can hear at the end of the sound how it has a little bit of a warble to it, uh, just a little bit of a tremolo, and that really helps the sound overall. I've got a second electric piano that sounds like a, a late 80s, early 90s kind of sound. It has very much a bell sound to it, and that sounds like this. You can hear how that has that bell sound to it it really ha adds a, a bit of a percussive element to it. And once we start to tie these sounds in together, you'll really see how they, they work together. Finally, I have a soft or a warm pad. It's not too airy, not too fizzy, it's just nice and subtle. And the pad, uh, as keyboard players, we refer to this as the glue. It helps glue things together. So that soft pad sounds like this. You can automatically hear how nice and warm uh, sounding that is. The, it doesn't have a big attack to it. It's very subtle. Uh, the release on it kind of trails off just a little bit. And so as we add these things in together, you really see how they work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with an acoustic piano sound. And I'm going to take the song This I Believe by Hillsong. And I'm just going to play the intro of the song. Now I'm not adding any special effects or anything to it. This is just a straight acoustic piano. And I'll begin to layer the sounds together so you can see how they work. So this, this is the intro uh, of, of this, I believe, with just an acoustic piano.
as you can hear, that sounds very sterile, kind of choppy. And the reason that it's like that is I'm not even using my sustain pedal. When you use your sustain pedal, that adds another layer into the, uh, into the mix. And so just the acoustic piano by itself sounds very sterile, very percussive. It's really not <laughs> very inviting uh, to get you in the mood to worship. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sustain pedal, which will add just a little bit uh, of a layer to it, and it's going to help lengthen the sound. It's going to change the sound a little bit, and that sounds like this. Immediately you can hear that it helps soften the sound, it helps make it more pleasing to listen to as you go along. So that's the acoustic piano and just using the sustain pedal. Next I'm going to add some reverb to that acoustic piano so that it helps give it some space, it helps uh, provide a little bit more depth to the sound. Now all I'm using uh, is a hall. Uh, there are different kinds of reverbs. There's rooms, halls, cathedrals, uh, garages, things like that that they basically they sample different room spaces. And uh, so I'm just using a hall which is kind of a medium to a large size thing. You don't want something that's too big uh, but this has a nice trail to it. So here's the sound without the reverb. Here it is with it. without and with it. Immediately you can see and hear how it, it helps, uh, it gives it a trail to the sound. When you hit it, you continue to hear the sound. And so that's really going to help us as we combine our sounds together. So with the reverb, the acoustic piano and my sustain pedal, it sounds like this. Already it's much nicer to listen to. So that, that's just combining basically three simple layers and we've not even really changed sounds yet. Uh, we've just provided some reverb to the sound, we're using our sustain pedal and it's just an acoustic piano. So immediately you can hear how that layering is helping the effect. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to add that soft pad to the mix and this is really going to help glue things together. And that sounds like this. You can see how that pad really just glues things together. It, it trails on even as we begin to change our chords. Uh, and as you can see, the, the pad doesn't change until I lift up off of my sustain pedal. There at the end, I let go of the keys and the pad continued on until I let off of that sustain pedal. And that's just a really nice feature to have. It helps glue things together, gives it a little bit more depth, and really can help you in providing atmosphere and, uh, and just an overall bigness to the sound. As we move down into the chorus and other sections, you'll really hear uh, how that helps the sound. I'm going to go ahead and add in now my, both of my electric pianos. And this is basically the final sound. I'm combining the bell sound with the Fender Rhodes as well as the soft pad and the acoustic piano and it sounds like this. And again, you can hear a little bit more depth to the sound. You can hear how that bell sound ties in. If I take out the acoustic piano, it sounds like this. And with the acoustic piano.
that really gives it some space. Gives the uh, with the Bell uh, electric piano it gives it a little bit more percussiveness to it, which is really nice. If we take that sound and we move to say the chorus, it sounds like this. As you can see there, I went to the chorus, and then I got to the end of the chorus, and I was able to fade out the instruments that I didn't want, and I had the pad conti continue over, and then I continued to play more. And as you heard, there was no break in the sound, and that's something that you want to look for. You don't want to have to have a break in the sound because that can really ruin the mood and really ruin the effect that you're going after. So you want to be able to layer your sounds together and control the volumes independently of those things. Uh, many times as a keyboard player, when we get to the end of, of a really um, worshipful song, maybe a slow song, and perhaps somebody wants to pray, you want to be able to provide that underbed of music as somebody prays. Uh, if somebody's talking and you want to provide that underbed, you want to be able to do that. So being able to change your sounds without the sound changing is very key and very crucial. So again, you want to look for a keyboard that you can uh, layer your sounds together in a performance or a multi. You want to be able to turn those sounds on and off, and then you want to be able to control their volumes uh, independently as you go along. If you can do that, then you really will be on your way to becoming a better keyboard player.